use Tuesday afternoon after you finish the uh, MPT and PNEs? I went to the zoo. Okay. Wasn't I, expecting I, that answer, but go ahead. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's. I, I felt like in the few hours I had left, it was more important to maintain a positive attitude and just don't let any negativity in. Don't overthink stuff. Uh, I, 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 I didn't think the studying for that small amount of time would be a difference between a pass and a fail. So I went and tried to find the orangutans, but they were all sleeping because it was too hot because it was Texas in July. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And we've got a fun story today. We've got uh, not only a new uh, passing Texas bar exam uh, taker, student, but somebody who also took the New York bar exam with us a long time ago and passed. And uh, I want to welcome Jason Sorensen to the, the broadcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is exciting times. Um, you know, normally we talk to people who take the exam, I don't know, five, six, eight, ten times. They struggle. It's, it's these stories of, you know, real drama. And I'm not going to suggest that you don't have drama in your life. But it's kind of nice to talk to somebody who just quietly, without much uh, fuss or muss or drama, manages to go for two for two on the bar exams in two pretty tough states. So you got to be feeling good about that. Um, yeah, you know... Uh except for the one caveat both times now i took new york and then they switched to ube now i took texas and just last week they say they're going ube so do you think i could get state? you yeah well, could you take georgia next because that's the one we want to <laughs> <laughs> or california yeah, yeah. a great city yeah yeah it's kind of weird isn't it this switch you know you do the exam and then they go to the ube and it gets easier because the texas bar is is a bear cat isn't it it, it is. You know, I heard a lot of people saying New York was harder, but I felt much more stressed and, and taxed after Texas than I did New York. Yeah. And Texas, of course, has these odd subjects like oil and gas. And then it has Texas procedure and evidence, which is part of a half day of the exam. Um, was that a bit of a struggle to, to get into all those Texas state specific subjects for you? Uh, oil and gas especially was tough. Um, I, I clerked for a trial judge for a year and a half. So the P&E section was almost exciting. Yeah. I remember how to do that. Yeah. So that part was good. Yeah. But oil and gas is kind of weird. So that's that's part yeah. of it. And guardianships was another one that it's just there's so much to cover and you don't really know what the question is going to be. You kind of just have to roll the dice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's back up a little bit. And why don't you start by sort of telling people your story, how you ended up taking the New York bar and then being yeah. in a position to take the Texas bar? Sure. Uh, well, I went to law school in Texas, uh, but wasn't really sure I wanted to practice here. And I had initially wanted to take Colorado, but my girlfriend at the time vetoed that. So we agreed on New York. Sign up, pay the fee, get your ticket and everything. And then she's no longer in the picture. But I say, what the heck? I paid the money. So I went to New York, took the exam, passed. Uh, but it was 2015. The job market was pretty tough. So I stayed here in Texas and kept working and finally decided to take the bullet and take Texas. So so yeah. from 2015 until 2018, you've got your New York bar license, but you're working yeah. in Texas. And I think right. this question comes up sometimes. People say, well, do I have to be licensed in the state that I live in? Well, for some jobs you do, but for some you don't. So it's perfectly acceptable to be licensed somewhere else and be working. But what made it better for you to have a Texas bar license, why go? Why put yourself through that? Um, well, I, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was doing. I worked for the legislature for a session, and that was great. Um, but a lot of it was seeing lawyers do work that I could do in New York, but I couldn't do here in Texas that I wanted to be doing. Um, the stress of you know not sure how you're going to be able to plan your life around events without knowing how things go. And finally, I just got to the point where I, I didn't feel like I was going anywhere positive. So I, I, I wanted a Texas license. So. Yeah. Yeah. Were you working for the Texas legislature or the New York? Uh, Texas. Okay. The House Research. Yeah. So a member of the Texas legislature, Armando Wally, uh, took our bar review while he was in the legislature. Oh, really? Yeah. And passed. So that's kind of a, I mean, talk about a crazy life to lead, isn't it? Right, yeah. you're, you're you're involved in all of that and studying for the bar. Um, in in your case, and I think this is a good 
life lesson for people. You know, a three, four year period with a bar license was enough to kind of get the, the monkey off your back. I'm, I'm licensed, I can do some things. And then you start looking at career opportunities, right? And saying, you know, maybe I, I really do want to stay here in, New, in Texas rather than going to New York or somewhere else. And so it starts to make sense then that you're going to take the exam in that particular state. Did you feel like you had any advantage having taken and passed a bar previously? Definitely. Uh, it, the stress spike peaks and troughs were, I think, a lot narrower. Um, well, you know, when I took New York, uh, having gone to a Texas law school, I had kind of just decided I was going to bet the farm on the MBE and uh, just change all the y'alls to use guys and hope for the best. <laughs> Did we tell you to do that? Was that our, was that, our advice? I, I, that, that may not have been a, a, a direct quote. But it was pretty close. Okay. <laughs> um, and so you've got that experience then. So when you're walking into the Texas exam, it's not like do or die here. You've already got a license, right? So I, right. I think that that emotional spike that you talk about probably is not quite so great in that situation. On the other hand, you're studying while you're working, right? Yes. yes. Okay. What was that like for you? That... that um, yes. If, if you have a choice, I would recommend not <laughs> working, but folks got to eat, some of us yeah. more than others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it does. Like, you, you work a full day. I was working full time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a whole day. You're ready to go home and just relax. But now you've actually got to study <laughs> as if it's another full time job. Yeah. How many hours a week would you say you were studying? <sighs> The goal was always four hours a night. I didn't always hit that. Uh, I, I'd say two hours was more regular. And then I try to pick up the difference on the weekends. Okay. And for how long a period of time did you study? When did you start back into your studies for the July exam? Uh, April. Okay. So fairly late. Yeah, so you've got April, May, June, and July, so a, a three to four month period, which is what we would typically think of as being sort of the optimum uh, at the, the short end of the optimum scale. Um, and working four hours uh, on nights, some hours, some nights two, you say, and then some weekend hours. So 20 hours a week, is that a fair assumption or maybe a yeah, bit more? I think that's fair. Okay, now you enrolled in our basic coaching program. I think both times you were in the course. Um, how did that work for you? Because I get the question a lot. People say, well, can I pass if I don't have somebody reading my essays and reviewing them and going on the, over them? What, what was your thinking about that, and, and why did you choose that course? Yeah, so uh, the second time it was because, um, you know, I'd already had the New York pass. Um, and actually, that's my, my score in New York was, on the MBE at least, was quite a bit lower than my Texas score. Um, so I, I kind of just decided, you know, it's like I did New York without ever going, going to a New York law school. So Texas, I should be fine. And I just need to hit the MBE really, really hard. And so I, I, I didn't feel like um, I needed the additional one-on-one uh, -on -one time because, you know, qualitatively, I, I, I had an idea of what they were looking for in the essays. I just needed to know what to say. Right. And, and so the materials covered all of that for you, right, uh, between the lectures and the written materials? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and so you followed the study guide pretty carefully in terms of the order of assignments and the things that you yes. were asked to do? Okay. Yes. And so as you're going through, you're balancing then your multi-state studies and your Texas studies and the MPTs, which you had done in New York as well, right? That was part right. of the, the exam there. So It was a fun one this year. Yeah. This was an interesting one. Did you, you had the uh, the rugby association, wasn't it? Uh, this year I had the gunshot. Oh, this was the persuasive brief. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the 2015 was a, a parent authority borrowed credit card snoozer. Oh, that's right. So this yeah. one you got violence yeah. and. <laughs> yeah, mayhem, all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, it was a persuasive yeah. brief. That's right. Okay. There were two per performance tests. Texas only pulls one. I forgot that. That's right. Uh, so you got the uh, you got the more straightforward one. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, there was a second one about setting up articles of association for a rugby uh, team, 
Oh, Silence and Mayhem as well. <laughs> yeah, also Silence and Mayhem. So there you go. Um, so the way the Texas Bar Exam is set up, for those that don't know it, is that there's a half day on Tuesday with P&E and the performance test. And then there's you're off in the afternoon. And then you've got uh, Wednesday multi-state, same as everywhere in the country. And then on Thursday, you have uh, your essays. Uh, and we'll talk about those in a minute. I, I'm just curious, though, what did you, how did you use Tuesday afternoon after you finished the uh, MPT and P&Es? I went to the zoo. Okay. Wasn't I, expecting I, that answer, but go ahead. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, I, I felt like in the few hours I had left, it was more important to maintain a positive attitude and just don't let any negativity in don't overthink stuff uh I, I i didn't think the studying for that small amount of time would be a difference between a pass and a fail so i went and tried to find the orangutans but they were all sleeping because it was too hot because it was texas in july there you go well, i think we've just titled this interview <laughs> he went to the zoo during the bar exam um so there you go all right so now you're back in second day uh for multi-state and since you had taken it in New York, a seventh subject of civil procedure had been added. Um, did you notice any difference in taking the multi-state this time from before? Um, there was, there's only one question that I remember because it stood out. It had to do with whether you could indict a sitting president that I didn't think was fair because we don't know the answer to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, I'd forgotten about the civil procedure change. Um, that was one of my stronger subjects in school and something I was more familiar with. So if anything, I probably felt better about it. Yeah. And, and so you, you come in, you, you do the, the day. It's a, it's a long day for sure. And then I think Texas makes it really challenging because now on the third day of the exam, this is the longest test in America now, uh, you've got 12 essays to do, uh, six broad topic areas, two essays of half an hour each, uh, in these these subject areas, what was that like for you, just in terms of the the physical endurance of it? That that made a huge difference. Um, I remember when I finished New York on the second day, walking out after the MBE, just this wave of relief. You're done. You get to enjoy uh, whatever you want to do. In Texas, you finish the MBE and you're just like, oh my gosh, the the that mountain remains before you. You just have the hills behind you. Yeah, so yeah. It's definitely a big difference in terms of, and, and for me, I felt more comfortable with the MBE anyway. So the, I, I prefer doing the hard task first and then getting to the easy one. And this is kind of the opposite. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would agree with you. It, it, it's pretty tough to kind of get yourself physically and mentally uh, back up the mountain on Thursday. And because of the structure of the exam, you get two questions at a time, an hour to do them. Did you allocate your time equally between questions? Um. No, because I think some the calls of some questions, as I recall, were much narrower and easier mm -hmm. to answer. And so it, it didn't make sense to allocate the same if, if I've got it. <laughs> now let's move on to the one that is maybe a little bit more challenging and try to get as many points on the board as possible. Was your strategy to do the, the simpler question first in each pattern? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and did you type your answers? No, I hand wrote. You Which interrupt. I, okay. I definitely would not do if I had to take it again. Okay. See, I told you, folks. All right. So, <laughs> but you you looked at the the questions and said, oh, I think this one's a little shorter, fewer calls of the question, or more direct. Answer that, get it out of the way, and then use the remaining time on the more difficult question. Right. Okay. Good. Um, and you know, while we know the broad categories of questions, we don't know. Um, you know, specifically where they're going to go. And we don't know, for example, if we're going to get one oil and gas or two real property questions. We don't know with trusts and guardianships. I mean, there are some, there are some oddities there as, as we go through. Anything that was particularly surprising to you in the, the essay part of the exam? Um, no, I, th there was, uh, I was annoyed that oil and gas exists, <laughs> but th I thought the question was pretty fair and it was bundled with, I believe, some community property or real mm -hmm. property questions as well. So it wasn't yeah, just yeah. make or break. Um, I, I, I felt like I had an idea of what the questions were going to be and there was nothing totally out of left field. Okay, good. Um, so in terms of the writing, did you feel like you were prepared going in? I mean, you, you had felt like MBE was your strength, but, but you understood the writing, what you were going to be doing. 
Yeah, I, my worst fears were harder than the tests that they gave us. So. Okay, good, good. I'm glad. So we try to make it a little tougher. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so then you you finish. Uh, what was it like at the exam? Uh, I mean, just generally, what did you have a different perspective having been through a bar before? You know, I, I did, and I, I sat down and I was kind of in my zen, okay, just flow with the water kind of mentality. And then I, I hand wrote, but immediately to the left of us on the other side is where the laptop section started. Mm -hmm. And the way they had the power strips, it looked like they were plugging one into the next one. The uh... <laughs> And so we start smelling something. Oh, geez. We look over and there's smoke coming off of one of the tables. The power strip, I, I don't know if it was a short or what, but it started to overheat and burned a hole in the plastic table covering. So all I could think about was that poor girl when she sat down to take the bar exam. There was literally a burnt crisp <laughs> for waiting for her as, you know, you get superstitious enough going into the bar. Yeah, yeah. Or either that or she was typing so fast that she was burning a hole in the, the page. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Well, that yeah, it's always interesting. You, you never know. Bar exams have uh, their own quirks, don't they? Um, they do. Yeah. So then you finish and you've got this waiting period. And Texas does this odd thing. They announce a release date and then they release before the release date. You know, historically it's, it's you know, we're gonna release on Monday and then they actually send out results on Wednesday or Thursday. This year, we're gonna release on a Friday and then Monday morning, really without warning, just sort of, it pops up in your email. You get an email from the examiners. Uh, yeah, I, I'd been following uh, some forums and mm -hmm. one of the Texas Supreme Court justices posted Sunday afternoon that the individual results are going to be coming out in the morning and that's when yeah. everybody started yeah going crazy right yeah. so my my email lit up sunday night and i was like okay here we go so you get the results what's it feel like uh different than the first time when you passed new york y yes um the because both times you know i you stress in the moment and then it's done there's not much you can do about it you go on with your life and then the couple weeks before the grades come out, that's when all the built up stress starts yeah. starts to, to bundle and pop. And and I don't know why. Um, I, I had just had this sick feeling that like I you know, you start to overthink all of the things on the essay and then I, I was good about not torturing myself too much. Excuse me. But I did look at the uh, questions once they posted them. Mm -hmm. And thinking, oh, man, I completely missed this or, oh, I didn't really answer this well or, oh, I totally forgot about this little thing to the set. You can't do anything about it, but it still tortures you, doesn't it? Happens. It happens. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And then, and then I open, you know, I, I'm shaking. I, I had been checking my phone all morning. Uh, the results hadn't come out. Finally, I left for work. I get on the elevator. This girl's beaming. I passed the bar exam. Then I'm suddenly frantically passing the floor button for ours to get it so I can check. And but once you see that congratulations, I, I quit reading and started yeah. shaking. Yeah, yeah, it's a great feeling. That's a that's yeah. a wonderful thing. So now barred in two states. Um, yeah. And, and maybe I can talk you into taking some more so I can get them switched to UB. <laughs> I, I like that idea. Um, what advice would you give somebody that's sitting for the bar at this point? Now that you've successfully done it, you're twice first time passing. Uh, so you're beating the odds by by a long shot. Um, take it seriously, mm -hmm. but don't let it consume you. Uh, it, it's, it's just like with law school. What, however difficult the material is, if you have a good attitude, you're going to have a, such an easier and better experience than if you criticize yourself. It would not constructively anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if you're hard on yourself, if you don't let yourself enjoy things as they're happening, uh, just to, to be positive, for lack of a better. Uh, yeah, I think that's great advice. I mean, I think your mental attitude really makes all the difference, doesn't it? I mean, and I'm sure you saw people at both exams that are just wired and, and completely freaked out. And it's pretty tough to be at your best when you're in that mode. So, um, you know, I think by nature, you're a pretty calm guy. That helps, uh, but I think definitely uh, to have that sort of peace of mind and just I'm going to go in and do my best and then let it go uh, is probably the best uh, approach to be taking. 
Um, that's awesome. Definitely. Well, that's great. Let me just ask, why did you choose Celebration Bar Review? Um, honestly, uh, the position I was in, uh, I didn't have a lot of extra resources, and mm -hmm. the monthly payment plan mm -hmm. um, was great. Now, for when I took New York, um, mm -hmm. I, I had found the app on mm -hmm. the Android store. Yeah. Didn't didn't know what it was. The I, I the price worked for me. I listened to the lectures and and, and loved it. And, and it's like this was great. But for some reason, it didn't connect that it was celebration to celebration um, until I'd already paid everything and I started listening to the first lecture. And I thought, oh my god, that's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So, so from the app to the basic coaching course. So that that's pretty yeah. cool. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that it worked for you, and I'm glad that, that you were able to have the success. I think sometimes people think they've got to throw the kitchen sink at it, and for some people they do. But frankly, there are people that, that just having access to the materials and the structure, the study guide, the questions, the, the lectures, and so on, uh, that, that's ample, and you don't need a whole lot more than that. So I think it's nice, at least we think, you know, being able to offer these different options so that people aren't buying more than they need. And I think you were pretty judicious about getting just what you needed and, and taking care of it that way. So uh, I'm glad we could do that. Anything else that you want to share with our audience? I know that uh, there are going to be people going, wow, man, I'd just be happy to pass one bar, much less two. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so you're like, you're like a bar god now, you know. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. uh, I've never been accused of an overabundance of humility. But okay, I'm not there sure you go. I go that far. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it's you, you reach a point of diminishing returns if you get to the point where you're just grinding your fingers to the bone trying to to chase after every little nuance in the law and, and oh there's this exception but then there's this exception like I, 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 knowing how to talk to the bar examiners I think is at least for the essay portion is the most important um, and being consistent in your reasoning and applying it, um, knowing how much child support you need to pay for seven kids across three dads, like maybe that's helpful in practice, but I, I don't know that that's time well spent for the bar. I agree. I agree. Well, I, I think you hit just the right balance all the way through, and you passed two of the toughest bars in the country. Uh, so, you know, hats off to you, and congratulations. I know it must feel great. Uh, and now you get to, to stay in Texas and do good things with your Texas bar license. So um, just really pleased for you. And, and I appreciate that you would come on and do the interview and, and share your story with us. I know that it'll encourage a lot of people to think, wow, this, I can do this. It's, it's possible. I mean, I don't have to go crazy here. Um, and so that's, that's good news as well. So I want to thank you for being with us, Jason. It's really great to, to have you here. Uh, look forward to hearing more great stuff, and let me know when you're ready to take that next bar exam, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you'll, be, you'll know before I do, probably. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, listen, everybody, thanks very much for being with us. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.